Hi friends, here at Lando Lakes, it's our most favorite time of the year, pie season, which is technically always, but what better way to celebrate than with a blue ribbon apple pie? All right, let's get started. First round of all the ingredients, apples, ice water, flour, butter, sugar, brown sugar, salt, cinnamon, and nutmeg. Starting with the crust, combine flour, sugar, salt, cinnamon, and nutmeg in a bowl. Cubing the butter before adding it to the flour makes cutting into the flour much, much easier. Add the cubed butter into the flour, slowly, for dramatic effect. Gently toss the butter to coat with flour so it doesn't stick together. Now for the cutting. The best tool for this is a pastry blender. It makes quick work of cutting the butter into small pieces. If you don't have one, buy one. If you are making a pie right this second and don't have one, you can use a fork or a butter knife, but expect it to take a long time. You want to cut the butter until coarse crumbs, aka the butter is roughly the size of a pea. This is what gives you flaky layers. Any bigger and you'll see pools of butter, but any smaller and your dough will be more like a cracker. It's better your pieces of butter are a little too big than a little too small. Stir in enough ice water with a fork just until the flour looks like this. Ice water. I usually get a cup of ice water before I even start so it's as cold as possible when I get to this step. Six to nine tablespoons is our best estimate to how much water you're going to need. Sometimes it's a little more, but sometimes it's a little less. Transfer the dough from the bowl to the counter and gently bring it together into a cohesive ball of dough. Divide the dough in half and shape each half into a ball. Flatten them slightly, it'll be easier to roll out later. Wrap in plastic food wrap and put in the fridge. 30 minutes later, lightly flour your surface. Roll out one ball of dough into a 12 inch circle. Start in the middle and work your way out. Turn the dough 90 degrees throughout rolling so you know it's not sticking to the counter and be careful not to go too thin on the edges. Fold the dough into quarters. This is my preferred method. The other method is to roll it up on a rolling pin. Place the dough into an ungreased 9 inch pie plate, unfold the dough, and then press firmly against the bottom and sides. Don't stretch the dough at this point. Work it gently into the pan with the tips of your fingers. Stretching it to fit will result in a shrinking crust. Trim the crust to 1 half inch from the edge of the pie plate, and then set it in the fridge to keep cold. Now for the filling. Peel all the apples, and slice all the apples. I like to use a mix of Granny Smith and Honeycrisp for the flavor and texture once they're baked. Combine all the filling ingredients and toss lightly to coat. This is my second favorite part, spooning the apple mixture into the prepared crust and back into the fridge. Roll the remaining pie dough into a 12 inch circle. Roll the dough onto the rolling pin and unroll over the filling. Trim the pie dough, seal and crimp or flute the edge. You can use your knuckle, finger, or end of a spoon to flute. To flute with your hand, use your finger and thumb of one hand while pinching the edge of the crust. Press down between the two fingers with your other hand and repeat the process around the edge of the pie. Cut five large slits in the top of the crust to let steam escape while baking. Brush with melted butter and sprinkle with sugar. You can use sparkling sugar for a little extra crunch and, well, sparkle. Bake 45 to 55 minutes, but check after about 35 just to make sure everyone is happy. It's done when the crust is a deep golden brown and juices begin to bubble up. Cooling is important. It lets the juices soak back in so that when you cut it, you don't end up with a soupy pie mess. Also, not part of our directions, but vanilla ice cream is critical to a success of an apple pie, so don't skip it. Ta-da!